Here, just outside Montreal, there is a place for athletic young Quebec lads who astoundingly don't want to play hockey. Who feel instead the appeal of a higher calling. Pro wrestling is more popular than ever. The recent ring death of Canadian Owen Hart didn't dim its appeal in the least. And it has always flourished in this province. It drew large crowds to arenas in and around Montreal long before TV and the World Wrestling Federation. And it has always enticed a certain kind of athlete, one who worships not Lafleur or Richard, but the histrionic flair of Quebec's very own wrestling legend, Mad Dog Vachon. If someday he could plant his size 13s in a big league ring like Mad Dog, Charles Dumoulin would be so happy. Then he'd never again have to play genial doorman, make that bouncer at a pool hall nightclub complex outside Montreal. But such are the trade-offs for a minor league grappler looking for a break. Charles, what are you doing here? I make a living, you know, like everybody. I have to pay things, and uh, even if I'm a, I'm a wrestler, I don't make money with wrestling now, so I have to make a living, you know. I get paid here by uh, kicking people out of the place, you know. In the meantime, he polishes his act as the nasty piranha in front of anyone who'll take the time to hoot at him. Film somebody, film the guy who's gonna be the future of wrestling. Me, I wanna get famous. Me, when I die, I'm gonna, I want people to say, hey, this guy, I knew it, he was a wrestler. That big guy who worked as a doorman, you know? I know this guy, he's my friend. Wrestling's regarded as a joke in most places, but not so much here. In this province, blue-collar neighborhoods especially, there are lots of men in tights looking for fights, plying their peculiar trade with small local repertory companies. And they've got lots of hardcore fans following their careers week in and week out, and cheering on whoever they imagine might become the new Mad Dog Vachon, someone to give la gloire once again to the French-Canadian sports scene. But first, maybe they can get the mic to work for a change. One, two. Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs. Ladies and gentlemen. Your host for this evening's festivities in a rec hall above a bowling alley in working class Montreal is the grandiosely named Northern Championship Wrestling. Ten, count them, ten bouts totaling three and one half hours of fun and frolic for a mere six dollars. Brought to you by a group of devotees who, like Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland, just like putting on a show. Not just anyone can join the cast. Computer nerd Luc Sagan had to go through some rigorous hoops to earn the right to transform himself into his nom de guerre nightmare. Only when he passes muster as an athlete does he get to pick his own grand entrance music and develop his dramatic persona with the fans. We love wrestling since we were young kid and we're doing that as like hobby, as like our hobby and we like to entertain people, that's why. And we are a big family there so we bring all our weekend there, we see our friend and you know, it's like, for me it's a big hobby. It's more than that for student Anthony Tonin. Though the chances of Tonin advancing much further in the game are almost nil. He's probably too small. But that doesn't stop him from reveling in the life. My wrestling is just as big to me as my day job, my education, even though it's not really going to be putting too much bread on the table. You know, it's something that I have a passion for, and it's a choice of mine to make, and I've chosen that wrestling is going to be a big part of my life. Small he may be, but Tonin's a master at baiting the fans, which makes him a popular bad guy. I am the common villain. You know, I represent the injustice the in society. And, you know, in the regular world, 
Those who lie, cheat, and steal, most of the time they get away with it. I never get away with it. I always get beaten down, and the more they beat me, and the more they hit me, the more the crowd cheers, the more they hate me, the more they love to see me. I'm a good guy, so the people come there, you know, cheer with me, you know, so I'm gonna guys who's gonna hit him, and the uh, people will love me because I hit him, that's right. and you know, they want me to give it more, so. Oh, yeah. Who decided you were gonna be a good guy? Well, I did. I decided I'm gonna be a good guy. I've got a face to be a good guy. Here's who decides that. Bertrand Hébert, by day, a pollster. By night, the NCW's chief executive, senior referee, and most important, script writer. He dreams up the plot lines that are often more complex than most TV soap operas. What are you doing there, Bertrand? Hey, I'm going over uh, tomorrow night's uh, show. I'm going now over the matchmaking part. Who's going to wrestle with who? and uh, what's going to be the result. Chakal going against Nightmare. You know, Nightmare is part of the Dream Warriors, and Chakal is part of Access Denied. Two tag teams, and those two tag teams have been having a, rival a rivalry all year. So in this match, you know, while things interfere in the match, called attacking Chakal, causing Nightmare, the good guy, their friends, to be disqualified, and Chakal will win the match. Could you follow that? No matter. The important thing is to fill the hall, and here's how they do that. Accountant Stan Zimler puts corporate clients on hold while he calls every NCW fan on his list. Then they can help set up the ring alongside the wrestlers. It's a second-hand ring they picked up for $2,000. A new ring would cost six or seven thousand. The organization doesn't have that kind of change. Indeed, everyone works for free, including the wrestlers, though. That doesn't mean they can be casual about the show. Nightmare reviews his scenario with Jackal. Uh, what I'd like to do is show you outside. No. And show you outside. What they're all hoping for, though it's a long shot, is that maybe in the crowd some night there will be a scout for the WWF or its rival, World Championship Wrestling, who'll spot one of them as a prospect. Most agree Piranha has the best chance of the bunch. He's big, athletic, has a delightful mean streak, acting ability, and knows how to follow the script. But if being discovered doesn't work out for anyone, well, they'll all just have to get by by having a good time. Okay. First, however, the pre-show pep talk by matchmaker Ray Bear. He implores his gang, the bad guys especially, to kindly cut back on the tables and chairs they've been using to hit their opponents with. The landlord has been complaining about damage to the furniture. And then an NCW tradition, the formal induction into the family of a new referee, an ex-member of the circus troupe Cirque du Soleil. A uh, lick on the neck isn't quite continental, but that's how they do things here. <laughs> 